In the first episode, we talk about truck nuts for like a long period of time. And perhaps you haven't had the talk with your children about truck nuts. Welcome to the Character Sheet, your home for everything tabletop and fantasy news. Today, I am joined by a man that barely needs an introduction. You might know him from My Brother, My Brother and Me, the Schmanners podcast, or if you're like me, you know him from The Adventure Zone, which is currently mm -hmm. on its new Versus Dracula arc. Ladies and well, gentlemen, it's Travis McElroy. Hello. We finished Dracula. We finished Versus Dracula. Oh, no. Like, am I behind? How many? Oh, no. A little bit. We, like, in only like two weeks. I think oh, at this point yeah. and uh, just started abnormals, the new one based off of like nineties, uh, you know, animals with abs, superheroes. Oh, that's amazing. Like, so oh, some street shark action. I'm here. For yeah. That. Street sharks, your, your bikers, mice, um, your samurai pizza cat, oh, the classic. Uh, your teenage mutant ninja turtles, mighty ducks. I can go on and on. I'm, yeah, I'm the, running oh, this why one. Why have I forgotten the, the cats that fly the fighter planes? How have I forgotten? Their oh, name? oh, 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 oh no. It's going to kill me. That's not, I'm gonna no, insert. Right, I'm right, gonna right. insert the trailer right now in post. SWAT cats. How did SWAT cats? SWAT cats. Yes. SWAT How did cats. I forget SWAT cats. All right, but we're not here to talk about SWAT cats, despite that, that taking yeah. several seconds. We're here to talk about your new uh, upcoming guest run on Twenty Sided Tavern, and so oh. we've talked about Twenty Sided Tavern on the show several times, but for people that might not be familiar, could you give us a brief little rundown of what the 20-sided uh, tavern show is all about? Uh, yeah, so it's an amazing opportunity. You know, if you like actual play uh, shows, if you've ever been to an Adventure Zone live show or anything like that, I mean, I would say maybe that's like 10%. You've got a start of the flavor of what it's like. Um, then add to that, like countless opportunities for audience interaction for, uh, like technical wizardry for, um, just different combinations of characters and action and, uh, twists, turns, laughs. Um, it's, it's a kind of D and D story uh telling device like no other you're gonna come you're gonna see the you know the characters go on the quest and complete the thing and then you can come back the next night and see a completely different version of the exact same thing you're never gonna see the same show twice in a row um a chance for us to jump around on stage and wear funny costumes do silly voices and tell great stories oh, it feels like a very good wrap up of the 20 sided tavern experience. And now, um, I'm over the man. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, of course, know you from the adventure zone or my brother, my brother, and me. And that, you know, these are sort of primarily audio only podcasts. Were you mm -hmm. sort of kind of thrown in the, the deep end when they got to this, you know, this live in person off Broadway performance, or had your live shows kind of prepped you a little bit for this? I'll tell you, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I got a degree in theater. Uh, from the University of Oklahoma in acting. I have not been in. And then I worked at the Cincinnati Shakespeare Company. That was going to be one of my years. questions coming up too. <laughs> yeah, as as I was uh, I was the technical director. and uh, But I was also in a bunch of shows. and But I haven't been in a theater production in like eight or nine years. Um, and nothing like this. Um, but then, as you said, like doing the live shows, this kind of like making up the story on the spot, telling the story as we go. Um, and also the thing I'm most excited about because 20 sided tavern shares this same kind of thing is like the point of it isn't just to tell the audience a great story, but to bring the audience along on the great story. So like when you're doing it, you like really feeding off the energy of the crowd, like writing, their interest in making sure you're bringing them along with you constantly that everything is an opportunity to like tell the joke with them to tell the story with them to include them in the moment and that's the same thing we try to do uh like with adventure zone live shows and stuff like that it's always been my favorite kind of theater to do one that's very collaborative between audience and and cast and so i don't have i've never performed off broadway i've never <laughs> Uh, maybe been in something this major before, but luckily I think I have like the building blocks of what it is. Um, so I'm pretty excited. That's fantastic. And 
in a lot of actual plays, or in basically all of them, you get all of your kind of improv and story prompts from your, you know, fellow castmates or from the GM. How different is it now that like the fate of your story and the fate of like you know, the prompts for all these improvs are coming from an audience? Like, how much does that shake things up for you? You know, I it's it's both terrifying in the unknown, but it's also like the chance to react with that it feels like such an i don't want to say easy but such a like i yeah easy win honestly for everybody right because this idea of whatever is about to happen even if it's the dumbest thing you've ever seen even if it goes completely off the rails even if it crashes and burns or if it goes spectacularly well and we suddenly, because of a suggestion from the audience, become as unto gods, right? Now, it's because of that moment, because of that uh, collaborative thing, because of that suggestion from the audience. And so now it's a chance, like, we're just that more connected. So not only that audience member that did it is connected, but every audience member knows that could have been their suggestion. Any one of them could have given that. And so it's just immediate, like, you know, hook of them being in the story, too. Um, and I love a chance to be like, and what are you thinking about how the show is going right now? Right. And that's what you get when you get that feedback. They're telling you, I'm invested. I'm paying attention. I care about what's happening. And so I just try to remind myself it's the same with D&D &D and the same with our live shows of you can't really do it wrong. As long as the goal is everybody's having fun, everybody's on board, everybody's invested in telling the same story, the choices that you make after that are the right ones. You know, no one's trying to break it. No one's trying to ruin it. No one's, you know, trying to make it all about them or whatever, because that's not what the show is. And so it's I'm excited to have that kind of chaos come into it because I also have to deal with my brothers and my dad. So I doubt that they're going to be worse at it than my brothers and my dad are. Well, th that's perfect segue into our next question. Speaking of your brothers and your dad, if is there one of them you think could actually like follow you up and do their own version of 20 side tavern? Do you think any of them would particularly be good at it or would this be just too much chaos for them? They I will say, I don't know about the chaos thing, but as far as the like getting up and performing this way, um, we talked about it beforehand and they were like, oh, we're going to send Travis to do it first and see how it goes. <laughs> I'm often the canary in the coal mine for these kinds of things because they they get a little nervous and that's fine. I think dad would do really well. Dad still does theater all the time, um, but he'd probably get pretty sleepy. He's an old, old man. <laughs> uh, so it probably wear him out pretty well. Honestly, I think any of us would do it well. Um, I kind of thrive a little more on the chaos than they do. Um, it's the reason I love doing our live shows so much. And I think it, it might melt Griffin with anxiety from the inside out. I think dad would get really sleepy because he's old. Um, and I think Justin um i don't know justin would i don't know maybe get uh get too nervous i don't know man justin i think would probably be the best of it don't tell any of them i said that they're all great and they would do an amazing <laughs> job and so we've had um sarah and dangle on the show before and we've we've had our pick of some of the characters like the different classes um and we've also talked with erica and abria about their run and the classes they got like abria very hilariously got wizard to tie in with worlds beyond number um without telling us which because we know you have i believe there's like three options in each which class did you wind up with and are you would you come back and try a different class if all this went well is there like a class you're interested in that you might not have gotten this first go around well i mean at this point so i'm i'm doing the the trickster uh the trickster grouping mm -hmm. um and i think there's three different ones i could end up with and all of them slot perfectly into the kind of characters I like to play um, uh, being like the best weirdest version of what they are um, you know I always like that idea of like I'm going to be this guy but he doesn't do this thing you would think or I've taken 
this kind of stereotype of this character to its um, illogical conclusion, I guess would be a better way to put it. Um, and so I'm very excited about playing the trickster. Uh, it's it's where I thrive. Um, that said, I would love, you know, I'd love to do any of them, but the fighter kind of class, I have a lot of fun doing martial class stuff. It's, you know, I cut my teeth on Adventure Zone doing uh, Magnus Burnside and very much throwing myself in the way of oncoming danger and stuff like that. And I love, I love playing a big old uh, meathead himbo. It makes me feel really happy. I just like playing a kind of like goofy, uh, very nice fighter or barbarian or something that makes me very happy. Uh, so maybe something like that would be fun. But right now I'm excited to play the trickster. It's what I always end up um, kind of reverting to when I play games like Baldur's Gate 3 and stuff. Is like I try to be like, I'm going to be like the paladin. I'm going to be, uh, you know, the fighter at the front. Oh, I'll be a wizard or whatever. And then it's like, ah, oh, the, fir the first lock I come to that I can't pick. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, no, nope, I'm reclassing. I'm a rogue now. Shut up, everybody. I'm going <laughs> to pick everything. Duh, amazing. When we got a chance to do it, I did get to pick the fighter class. Forget the name. I was the dwarf with the the keg hat. Mm -hmm. But uh, un, in the spirit of making, you know, the unexpected choices, he was a uh, Marxist labor organizer with a New Jersey accent. I love that. And yeah, and we spent most of the time just organizing the monsters into better, more efficient mobs versus fighting them. But yeah, that's the 20 sided tavern experience is hilarious. It's there's not really a bad character to be had in there, but it's awesome. You get to start no. with the tricksters. That's co founder of the channel, Christian. That was his start, too. And that was his character. And he had a great time with it, although he made a very strong accent choice he had to stick with for the whole episode. Uh, uh, yeah, I've been there. I've made that <laughs> mistake before. <laughs> yeah. So let's, see. well, let's talk very brief. Well, we were, I just mentioned to Bria and Erica. So let me talk about them real quick. Um, they said that their improv experience helped them a ton, given all this sort of unexpected prompting that they have to deal with. And like you mentioned before, you were the technical director for the Cincinnati Royal Shakespeare Company and you were in plays up. And we kind of touched on that, but is do you think that like that has has it come back to you a little bit as you've been on the stage or doing rehearsals? Or are you are you thinking this is just going to be an entirely different beast? It'll just be something that you'll have to figure out on the fly. I'm gonna be honest, it starts to feel like kind of a um uh, like it's all been building to this no not to get over dramatic, <laughs> but this thing of like, you know, I lived in LA for two years while I was there, studied at Upright Citizens Brigade, um, worked at the Shakespeare Company. I when I was at the Shakespeare Company, I did uh the complete works of Shakespeare Bridge a couple of times. Oh, my wife's which, favorite place. Yeah, one of my favorite to perform in, and it has a lot of the same energy of something like this, of like direct interaction with the crowd. Um, and it was my favorite to perform in and uh, I got to play the the uh, the goofball one. I would the one I would consider the trickster of those three, and like doing that, um, and then doing the the live shows for Adventures and stuff. Like the more we've been working on it, and I've been like going through the material and everything, and prepping and everything, it feels more and more like, oh, okay, yeah. I like I've never done anything exactly like this, but I've done this piece of it, and I've done this piece of it, and I've done this thing. And I can see, like, I can see how it all fits together. It makes complete sense to me. And I'm, ju I'm just so excited to get up in front of a crowd and to get up and, like, do it and play the show and do it with everybody. I'm, I, I can see it all in my head, Pete. It all makes sense. <laughs> it's all coming together. When we also, when we talked to Erica and Abria, they mentioned they had recently upgraded the size of the, the massive D20, the Decider. Have you mm. had a chance to roll the new decider yet? I haven't yet. Oh. I haven't yet. I'm I'm terrified, but mostly because I'm 40 years old and I'm worried about pulling a muscle or injuring my maybe throwing my back out, uh, throwing a big D20. We'll see. Maybe they'll give me a special back brace before I throw a massive heavy dice. We shall see. And then I guess one more question about 20 sided tavern, and that is um during your prep for this, have you had like like a big, like either a hilarious moment or just kind of like an aha moment where things just clicked for you that kind of stood out as like, this is what 20 sided tavern is going to be. You know, I uh, haven't gotten like officially into the practice part yet, but I've just been going over the materials and running through everything. And I was looking over the character prep work and 
uh, there is a character in there. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, he's a bard. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> and I was thinking about him today a lot. And a moment clicked into my head of like, oh, this is exactly what it is. And it just like fell into place and just made complete sense um, and, and made me very excited for it. God. So, not that that's the one. I mean, it'll be different ones when I do it. But that was, <laughs> like, it, that kind of idea of, like, this is all starting to make sense to me now. That sounds fantastic. And then, because we have, of course, a lot of people know you from the Adventure Zone. And as we found out at the top of the show, I'm apparently two weeks behind. So, would you take a little time? Tell us a little bit about the new season. What can fans expect from this latest season of the Adventure Zone if they are, like me, two weeks behind and still finishing up versus Dracula? <laughs> Oh, so when you get to Abnimals, uh, I am running it. Um, Justin Griffin, dad playing. They're playing Animal Heroes with Abs, which is my kind of catch-all term. Abnimals, my catch-all term for like those shows. You know, as I mentioned, the the Samurai, Pizza Cats, Biker Ranks from Mars, Street Sharks, that kind of thing. Um, and so Justin is playing as Axel Isle, the uh, extreme firefighter, uh, Axolotl. Uh, Griffin is playing as Navy Seal, uh, who is a Ross Seal, who is Navy colored and has never served in the armed forces. And Dad that. is playing as Roger Moore, who is a cow um, secret agent type from a planet that prizes sports ability. Um, and they're all working together uh, as this kind of ragtag uh, animals group. And, you know, I wanted it to very much be an homage to those kinds of, sh of, of shows and inspired by it. So this this season is our first season that is no swearing, no cursing. Oh. And I've heard people misinterpret that as it's for kids. And listen, I'm not saying it's for kids. I'm saying that if you're listening to it in the car with your kids, you're not going to hear any swearing in there that you'll suddenly have to I don't, lower the volume or explain to your kids what it is. That said, in the first episode, we talk about truck nuts for like a long period of time. And perhaps you haven't had the talk with your children about truck nuts. Um, and, and so that might be a little awkward for you. But other than that, it's silly and has a kind of Saturday morning cartoon uh, kind of vibe and, and vibe to it. We got, um, we got, uh, Jonathan Colton to do the theme song for it. Oh, awesome. So my older brother wrote the theme song and my older brother and his friend Eric Near did the music and stuff. And then Jonathan recorded it and it's an absolute banger. Um, and we're very, very proud of the show. Oh, well that sounds incredible. I've got to finish the last two episodes of versus Dracula and get caught up. In that. I'm also, <laughs> I'm also open to, if you want to talk about versus Dracula, I'll talk about versus Dracula with you. All yeah. Day. You know what? We got a little bit. Let's talk about, yeah, let's do versus it. Dracula was one of my favorite seasons. I I've enjoyed a lot of the seasons, but like mm -hmm. uh, for fans that are maybe even further behind than I am, tell us a little bit about versus Dracula. Cause it was a grand, well, I haven't seen the last I'm assuming you stick the landing. I don't know why you wouldn't. <laughs> I thought we did. Yeah, I thought we nailed it. <laughs> um, I would say versus Dracula, the best way to put it is it's the McElroy version of Curse of Strahd, mm -hmm. right? It's Dracula. Uh, Dracula is there in uh, On Grave, and uh, you follow. Uh, my character was named Crawford Muttner. Call me Mutt. Everybody does. And he was a like a uh, mountain man monster hunter from a family of monster hunter called the Muttners. But he was like basically the last surviving one because all of his like aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and nephews and nieces and uncles and dad and everything had died fighting monsters. Um, and then let's see. Then there was Justin played. Uh, oh, why am I forgetting your name? Lady. Give me a second. <laughs> Oh, it's going to bother me so much. Uh, oh, uh, Godwin. Uh, Lady Godwin. Yes, thank you. Um, took me a second. I was like, I left my mind too for a I minute. know. <laughs> Justin's character, Lady Godwin, um, was a older society lady who Dracula hit her with his car so hard that her body exploded. And so Frankenstein sewed her head onto a barbarian woman's body. So now she's a has an old lady's head and a young barbarian woman's body. And then dad plays brother Philo who uh, makes some choices. But in the beginning, he starts as like a friar, you know, from a monastic order. Um, and he's an artificer and 
um, we're trying to destroy Dracula, and it's maybe the goofiest um, season we've had. And then it's launched us into this new, like, uh, our one shot live show series of uh, Adventure Zone versus uh, public domain uh, properties, where we've done Adventure Zone versus Great Gatsby, Adventure Zone versus Moby Dick, Adventure Zone versus Wonderland. Adventure Zone versus Robin Hood, um, all with the same characters. Um, but I would say that it rivals, um, I don't know, some uh, all of our previous ones to be the stupidest and most fun, goofiest Adventure Zone series we've done. Um, it was an absolute blast. It is, yeah. You will not stop laughing. It is hilarious. Brother Philo definitely makes some choices, and it's he makes some choices. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, I now can only hope for the Adventure Zone versus Steamboat Willie to happen. He may have, he may have popped up somewhere already. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, so Travis, thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to see Travis in Twenty Sided Tavern, and you should, mm. his guest starring role is on November twenty seventh through December first. So make sure you get tickets. Check it out. It's a great theater. The cast is amazing. The setup is amazing. You will see the world's largest D20 being rolled, and it will be completely worth it. Yeah. Uh, but once again, thank you so much for joining us. And viewers, feel free to do the liking and the subscribing and all that YouTube stuff. Uh, and until next time, we will see you guys tomorrow with a new video. Uh, stay safe, everybody. Bye. <laughs>